and we are live. Thank you, Lord. We want to welcome Lord, may the blood of Jesus cover every viewer. Lord, may the blood of Jesus touch every fellow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of another day. Thank you, Master, for what you are doing in the lives of gifts all over the world. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Have your way, God. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Find expression in this reading. Find expression in this broadcast. Find expression all over. Let these be words of the Spirit and not words of men. Let these be a flow that comes from heaven through your servants. Let us be altars. Let us be altars that flow with the mind of God. Wherever we have sinned and thought or did, forgive us, Lord. And plead the blood of Jesus over our spirit, souls, and bodies. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Reba Contele Brasia Cantele Brasia. Reba Cayante, Rebo Sicote, Rebestio Conto, Brasia. Reba Cate. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It sure will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Oh, Lord. Reba Cate. Let the deep things of the Spirit be revealed. Oh Lord, revive your children. Oh Lord, let your will be done. Let the truth be revealed. Lord, nothing pleases you more than to hear that your children walk in truth. Let, let the truth be revealed. Let the light illuminate the darkness. Jesus be glorified. Jesus be glorified. 
glorified. Yeshua be glorified. Reba Conte de Brasia, Reba Cate. Oh, glory to God. Manto no Brescia Cate, Raba Cate, Redes Cate, Mante Brescia Cola Brasia. I just want to welcome all the viewers. Ya canta Raba Conte de Brescia. Glory to God. Reba Cante de Brescia. Raba Cotella. Stephanie Ingram, welcome. Macatella Brasia. Ricard Gulam, welcome. Aisha Harmon, welcome. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Makotolo Brasia Kaya. Amoy Williams, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Macontele Brasia. Alex Sheila, welcome. Macatele Brasia. Brasia contolo brasi, rebo contolo brasi, rebi contolo brasi, rebi contolo brasi. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Reba contolo brasi, zo contela brasi, zo ranamu tebi. Welcome. Ya contele. God bless you. Reba kolia, rebi contolo brasi. Evangelist Julius Kamau from the USA. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome. Marco Telebracia, Rabaka, Wafula Sandro, welcome. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Reba Contolo Bracia Catele Brese. Oh, we thank God for you. Macantele Brestio Cotolo Brace, Rabba Contele Brescia, Rabba Cotella. Glory to God, glory to God. Rapture ready. I see you, God bless you. Macontele Bracio Cotele Brace. Rebe Coyontolo Bracia, Rebe Cayantele Rebestia. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, precious Holy Ghost. Rebe Cayante Lebrecia. Cayante Lebrecia. Yes, you're welcome, viewers. You're welcome once again. Today we feel led to talk about the Marine Kingdom. People have been asking so much about the Marine Kingdom and yeah, we've been praying about it because we want to be led by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that those that are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. So uh, today we'll be talking about the marine spirit and how the marine kingdom uh, operates. People have been asking me so many questions about spiritual marriages and, and, and how, you know, spiritual marriages um, affect someone's life. And today we are going to talk about that. Um, I'll start with uh, my grandmother. All of you know that uh, my grandmother was a sorcerer and the devil used my grandmother to initiate me into the kingdom of darkness. And uh, while I was with my grandmother, there are so many things that I, I was able to see because she was grooming me, hoping that I would take on after her, I would inherit her witchcraft. And every generation is supposed to be greater than the previous generation. So uh, by the time I got delivered, I was at a higher level than my grandmother, and I had become a threat to her to an extent that she was now planning to kill me. In the kingdom of darkness, there is no friendship, there is no relative, there is no, uh, there, you, don't even, you don't even look at anyone as your parent because anytime the enemy asks them to sacrifice you, yeah, they will sacrifice you because they have no will. The first thing the enemy takes from anyone that is serving him, when I talk about the enemy, I talk about Satan. The first thing he takes from, from anyone who is serving him is the soul. And, and your soul has the will, the emotion, and the intellect. The mind is in the soul. So when they take your soul, it means you have no emotions. You have no feelings. Right. You're controlled by the enemy. And uh, my grandmother, have, having been covenanted to the kingdom of darkness, she had, she had no emotions. A person who kills... Uh, their, their mother to a point of killing your mom, you know, it means the enemy has taken hold of your soul. That's why Jesus asks that what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Mm -hmm. Meaning there are people that are prosperous, they are powerful, they are successful, but they are without a soul. And such people are like people who create sicknesses and then they come up with vaccines. They come up 
with solutions you know i spoke about the new world order in my book erica part two 18 years with lucifer and i was telling you before even covid 19 this book was awarded in uh, in in 2019 it was awarded as the best spiritual book of the year so that was before uh this covid came in but i was telling you that these people have laboratories and in those laboratories they design viruses and bacteria and then they they release these viruses and bacteria to human beings and then they are the ones that are funding and they, they own the fa big pharmaceutical companies so it's like they are making money even through this COVID-19 while other people are losing lives and, and losing jobs there are some people who are benefiting from it That's and right. these are the people who are supposed to defend you know the vulnerable people because of their position but because they have sold their souls to the devil I'm talking about presidents I'm not talking about small people big business guys the people like Mirinda Gates, Bill Gates, these are people that have sold their souls to the devil. By the time you want to depopulate the world, mm. you want to kill people at a large scale, like mm. they, they, they now no longer, you know, consider this minor, minor death, uh, like, you know, they, they look at it as nothing. They want to kill people on a large scale. Mm. So... Uh, my grandmother was at that level because she was controlling the principalities of eastern Uganda and she wanted me to take on after her. Now, if my grandmother was controlling eastern Uganda and I was taking on after her, just imagine how I would, how powerful in the kingdom of, of darkness I would be. But power in the kingdom of darkness is not something you can rejoice over because the more powerful you are, in the, the more sorrowful you are in the kingdom of darkness the bible says that the joy of the lord is our strength joy is god is delighted when we are we are we are happy when we are healthy when when we are living uh, when we have a normal life when we are excelling in life but satan is delighted when uh, people are miserable when people are in pain because the bible says he came to steal kill yeah, and to destroy right. and the people who serve the devil when they want to please him, they put themselves in pain. That's why they sacrifice the people that they love the most. Satan will never ask for someone you do not love. Mm. He will ask if you have a, if you have like three daughters and one and one and one son, and that son is your favorite. He will ask for that son because he delights in people's sorrow. When, when people are in pain, that is what gives him joy. If, when, if, if you read in the Bible about uh, Eli, Eli, Elijah and the prophets of Baal, when the prophets of Baal were calling unto their gods to consume their, their sacrifice, they had to cut themselves to appease the spirits. You know, they had to, for them, in order for them to please the evil spirits, they had to cut themselves. Imagine how dirty and filthy the devil can be. And if you're watching this video and you have sold your soul to the devil, I want to tell you today that there is hope. I came out of the kingdom of darkness and I want to encourage you to take that step and also get out of the kingdom of darkness and start serving God. It is not an easy journey, but it is worth it. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his, his soul? soul? There are people who are very powerful. They are celebrities. They are famous. They are in the limelight. They have almost everything that the world desires, but they don't have a soul. Mm. On TV, they will show you silver, gold. They will show you the Lamborghini, the Mercedes Benz. They will show you the private jet. They will show you all the beautiful things. But one thing they will not show you is when the demons are strangling them in bed. They will not tell you that these people don't sleep. The time I served the devil, I did not see any sleep. I only started sleeping when I, when I gave my life to Christ after my deliverance. I only got peace when Jesus, when I, ex I accepted Jesus into my life as my personal Lord and Savior. Without that, I had the money, I had the connections, I had influence, but 
I did not have peace. I did not have life. Jesus is the source of life. I want to encourage you today. It doesn't matter what you're going through. As long as you have Jesus, you will overcome that situation that you're in. And back to my grandmother, being a high-level sorcerer, she introduced me to the marine spirits. And how I first got an encounter with the marine kingdom is when she helped one of my uncles who was doing like he was doing bad financially in other words he was poor so he consulted my grandmother because he wanted to become rich and he was ready you know he was desperate when you're poor and you get to that point of being desperate and you're ready to do whatever it takes to rise up from the situation that you're in that is the the situation my uncle was in and when he consulted my grandmother my grandmother asked him to uh, fulfill certain things, bring certain things to her, including some, some goats, some birds, and, you know, and go get some herbs. And they mix, you know, uh, which doctors are, are herbalists because they mix herbs and they use these herbs. They use nature against mankind. So they mix these herbs. And uh, my grandmother told my uncle, go, it will be well with you. And my uncle left. Within two months, my uncle's financial status began to change. He began to get promotions at his place of work. People who, who joke with life, you know, you just think it's your qualifications that will sustain you in your office. Life is spiritual. We always tell you life is spiritual. spiritual. It is beyond your, your qualifications. Have, have you ever wondered why you can be in an office for 10 years? You, you're overqualified, but... Someone just comes to that place of work within two months, that person is promoted, the person becomes a boss, and you, you have been in that office for 10 years, and, <laughs> and it's like you've, you've never existed. Even if you, you, you say that you're going to resign, no one is, is bothered. It's like they're like, wow, thank God, she's even old. And yet you're the one that is working so much, you're putting in so much, but no one is noticing you. Why is it happening like that? It's happening like that because life is spiritual and you don't know. You're trusting in your qualifications. You know you have a master's, you have a PhD, and that alone is enough for you. That is what you're putting your trust in. Those people that you're competing with, they, 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 have, they have altars that they are dedicated to. And you, you only go to church on Sunday. And when you go to church, you don't even carry your Bible. The man of God has to read the Bible for you, and he has to pray for you, and then you go and do the other things that you have to do to put food on your table. I'm telling you, that's the reason as to why you, you try, you hustle, you try to do everything, and it's not happening because life is spiritual. Many people don't know that when they go to the banks to apply for loans, well, they'll go through that process uh, of uh, filling in those forms and, and you know, showing that you, you're capable to pay that money. And in case you fail to pay that money, they tell you to present what the bank can, you know, take something that is uh, equivalent to the money that you're, that, that you're taking from the bank. One thing they will not tell you is that after you have filled in those forms, they will take those forms to their altars and they will begin to enchant on those forms and speak spells against the people that have borrowed. You know that the people, the big guys in the banks are sorcerers. These other people, they are, the employees are puppets. They just do what their bosses tell them to do. Mm. But the big guys in the banks are sorcerers. And I want you to know this. So you get that loan, you relax, you invest as you have planned, and then you're able to pay for some time. And just when you're about to pay the rest of the money, you get problems. You get problems. You don't know where the problems have come from. Everything begins to go wrong. You expected things to go in the right way. And things begin to go wrong. And before you realize, you have failed to pay that debt. It has accumulated. And they have even confiscated your properties. And you get frustrated. Why? It's because life is spiritual. But you don't understand it. The Bible says we shall lend 
and not borrow. So, even when you go to the bank and you want that money, don't just rely on your plans and the paperwork and everything that you're going to do. You know, you have your programs, but the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The money that you're looking for, the marriage that you're looking for, the fame, everything that you want will be added and it will be a bonus. If, if you're on the altar, you know, an altar is a magnet. An altar is a magnet. It either attracts good things or bad things depending on the source of that altar. Now, <laughs> in the kingdom of darkness, it will appear like the people who are serving the devil are doing well. You know, that is what it appears like. But you know that the devil is a liar. He will not tell you that, yes, this person is prosperous, but this person has cancer. He will not tell you that I have made this person to be famous, but he's only going to live for two years from now. He has entered into a contract with me. There is a musician. I used to, I used to tell people that this, this man, he entered into, he's a, he was a Ugandan. He entered into a contract with the devil, a co signed a covenant with Satan because he was looking for money. He was coming from a poor background, a poor family where they would be thrown out of one house, from one house to another house. So because he was desperate, you know, being desperate is so bad. Never put yourself to a point of being desperate. Some people call and they're like, I want to commit suicide. Mm. What in the world would make you feel like committing suicide? Don't allow the enemy to put you in a, in a position of being desperate. That is one of his weapons. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. Learn to be grateful and happy in every situation. Whether you have the money, whether you don't have the money. Just allow God to be your, your source. Not your, not your job not your children, not your husband. If you look at your, at, your, at your spouse as your source of happiness, the Bible says, wow unto them who put their trust in men. Why? You'll be disappointed. Mm -hmm. Let your source be God. And when God is your source, nothing in this world can shake you. Nothing can move you. Even when the doctor says that you have two days to live, you, you will refuse the, the bible says that the power of life and death are in the tongue you will say no i will not die but i will live to declare the goodness of the lord in the land of the living why because you have chosen god to be your source not the not the doctor well it's good to follow their instructions and to take the medication as they have instructed you to take but let god be your source your source of life your source of provision, your source of happiness. Let God be number one in your life. And you will not be frustrated by the enemy. You will not become a victim of the enemy. Mm -hmm. So this man, because he was looking at money as his source, he began to worship money to a point of selling his soul to the devil. And after he sold his soul to the devil, he came up with a song saying, I gave my soul and conquered. I make my enemies to scatter. Then he mentions the songs he has released from the time he sold his soul to the devil. And people were looking at him as a star, as a celebrity, as a superstar, not knowing that this person had sold his soul to the devil. People began to, to plait his hairstyle. They began to put on like him. He used to put on, um, he had arms bands that he was using for witchcraft. And when he would be performing, he would throw into the congregation. And he would sing about magic. Peace be the magic. He would mm. say, if you have the ability, use that, that opportunity, you know, because of magic. Mm. You know, and, and, and people would dance. You know, people in clubs are in trouble. I'm, I'm going there. I'm going to talk about the Marine Kingdom and I'll explain how these clubs operate and you will understand what we are talking about. Life is spiritual. This man lived for just a short time. He, he died and 
his children are not benefiting from all his sweat, his effort. Someone else is benefiting from his music. His bosses, the people he signed and bowed down to, they cannot allow the children to benefit from his, his sweat, his effort. This man had over a hundred songs that were all hits. They were like booming. They were all over. Now, when you look for the children, when you see where they are, when you look at the things this man sold his soul for, this was a man who was supposed to live. He had, a, he had a long, beautiful life ahead of him. But he allowed the things of this world to blind him. And he sold his soul to the devil. And now he's no more. He was murdered. And no one came up to, you know, get justice for him. Because that is how the enemy operates. He came to steal, kill, and to destroy. After he sold his soul, he began to rejoice. Because he was now driving a Lamborghini. He was now driving a Mercedes-Benz. He was now in all the expensive vehicles. He was now, he could afford to stay in any powerful hotel. He was now dining with the leaders of this world, the rulers of this world. He, he was being invited in big places. And the things of this world blinded him to a point that he would even enter a club and say, if you're here and you don't have money, get out. Because he felt he, he felt he had what he had been looking up to as his God. And that was money. The love of money is the source of all evil. And he became so wicked. He began to go from shrine to shrine to keep his position. He became greedy. He began to fight even for the small things that the poor people had. He began to, to disrespect the poor people. Drive. Those expensive vehicles, you know, brag and step on the, on the poor people, you know. So he died at a tender age, but before he died, he was regretting. And in his music, he was asking God to give him a second chance. He was asking for mercy before he was rejoicing. Now he was in a point whereby he didn't know what to do. So what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Your soul is, is very, very precious. Nothing in this world can equate to your soul. If someone has your soul, I will tell you, based on experience, my soul was caged for seven years. When your soul is caged by the devil, you don't have peace. The Bible says there is no peace. For the wicked. For the wicked. The mm -hmm. devil can... The people whose souls are caged, they do not sleep. That's why the Bible says he gives his beloved sweet sleep. That's right. When you're sleeping in your bed, don't take that lightly. There are people who do not sleep at all. And they are in... in you see them saying that we are team no sleep. We do not sleep. They don't sleep at all. Money is their God. They have done everything. There are people who have sacrificed their beloved ones. There are people who have done so many things to get to the point that they are, they are in. So because of the evil that they have done, that evil comes back to them. It torments them. You see them in those big vehicles, but you do not know the tears behind the wheels when they are driving. Some of them are, are so, so affected to a point that they can't even drive. Someone else has to drive them. Their hands are full of blood. They can't drive their own cars. So you, you think it is swag. You know, they are so scared because they know there are some people that are coming after them because of what they have done. They have bodyguards. You, you think it is fashion. Oh, these people, they fear. They cannot be among us people freely because of, of what they have been doing. Their sin is following them until when their cup of iniquity is full and then they die. Most celebrities, secular artists, don't live long. They die prematurely. Why? Their, their cup of iniquity is full. They molest children, defile, sacrifice virgins. They do so much to get to the top. So when you see someone on the billboard, and they do not point at Jesus as their source. 
My dear, wait. Don't admire them. The Bible says, envy not the wicked. Do not envy them. You're far better than them. Just be thankful with the little that God has given you. And trust him. Trust that he will give you more. And God is faithful. Live by his word. Everything God says in the Bible is true. Everything he states in his word is true. So I'm telling you this not to scare you. I want you to know the truth. The Bible says that you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Those people that you're admiring, who is your role model? Is your role model Michael Jackson? How was Michael Jackson? What was his source of power? Look into all that. Look at these people. Look at, at how they live. In most cases, these celebrities commit crime and people are blinded by fame, by power. They don't see the things. There is a certain musician in our, in our country. He burned someone to death. No one sees that. It was in newspaper headlines. He burned someone to death. People are still praising him. After he burned someone to death, no one comes out to talk about this. Apart from us, because for us we are not scared. We are not scared of the devil. So we will come out and say this thing the way it is. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? These are people you're calling your celebrities, your heroes, your stars. They are the ones that are molesting the boys. They are sodomizing people. They are, yes, they are sorcerers. The songs that they sing bring death. You, you give me heart attack, you turn me upside down. What kind of song is that? And people are dancing to the songs and they are getting heart attacks and they don't know why. You are healthy. No one in your family has ever had a heart attack. But why? There is a door that has been opened in your life. The music you're meditating on, the things you're watching on TV, whatever you are, you're allowing to enter into your heart, your heart is a door. The Bible says, guard your heart above everything because out of the heart comes the issues of life. So, my, now coming back to the marine kingdom, before I go there, Tim, do you have anything you want to share to add to that? Yes, because um, especially since this, this particular broadcast is about the marine kingdom, so um, it's important that the world knows that the vast majority of Satan's kingdom is the marine kingdom. And it is estimated that the earth is 70% water. And so are human beings. So with that in mind, just imagine how much effect water has over humanity, over life itself. So, um, yes, you know, the earth is 70% water. And Satan's kingdom, the vast majority of his kingdom is in the waters, the marine kingdom. It is a watery kingdom. It is a spirit dimension, but it is located in the waters. And, you know, it's funny that mankind wants to explore outer space, but they have not even explored the deep seas. And even if they went down there physically, you're looking for spirits. And so they are just invisible to the physical eye at those depths as they are on the surface of the earth. So, but it's just, you know, strange that man is trying to explore, but man claims not to be able to realize that life is spiritual and that there are spiritual beings dominating our societies. Yeah. Uh, if you read Ezekiel chapter 27, mm -hmm. um, you know, Ezekiel the prophet is, is, is speaking and he's talking about Satan, okay, and mm -hmm. he's prophesying to Satan mm -hmm. and in this book It's talking about how much Satan is involved in business mm -hmm. He has enriched the merchants of the earth And I'll talk about a, a little bit about what, what a merchant is but mm -hmm. uh, In Ezekiel chapter 27 from verse 32 mm -hmm. And it says and in their wailing they will take up a lamentation for thee and lament over thee, saying, What city is like Tyrus, 
like the destroyed in the midst of the sea okay mm -hmm. so he's saying what city is like tyrus that was destroyed in the midst of the sea okay so there was a city there it was called tyrus it was named after a king who was whose name was tyrus mm -hmm. but tyrus is satan okay he has many names he has so many names all right now verse 33 when your wares wares are goods that are sold when your wares went forth out of the seas you filled many people you did enrich the kings of the earth with the multitude of your riches and of your merchandise in the time when you shall be broken by the seas in the depths of the waters your merchandise and all your company in the midst of thee shall fall all the inhabitants of the isles shall be astonished at you and their kings will be sore afraid they will be troubled in their countenance mm -hmm. the merchants among the people shall hiss at you you shall be a terror and never shall you be any more this is the end this is the prophetic end of satan mm -hmm. but you see how his wares you see how his merchandise mm -hmm. came from the depths of the sea now look at the word merchant for a minute i just want to give you a quick secret mm -hmm. merchant is made up of two words Myrrh, like the same way we use the word myrrh in mermaid or merman, M-E-R. It pertains to water, the love of water, mm. pertaining to or as having to do with water. So myrrh and chant, C-H-A-N-T. To chant is to recite as in an incantation over and over again. So to chant is to recite, to conjure over and over again when you are reciting over and over again or chanting over and over again what are you doing you are conjuring a spirit mm -hmm. so a myrrh chant is a water chant okay water chant meant uh you chanted over the waters what were you doing you're conjuring and what are you conjuring water spirits yes. yeah water spirits so this the 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 financial district the financial section the finances of this world are controlled by the marine kingdom and even when we are referring to and i think i've mentioned this before when we are referring to um finances we are, we all often speak of finances using uh liquid terminology liquid cash frozen assets loan sharks mm -hmm. partnership whenever we're talking you know we're talking um, about banks the side of the bank is the river the river or the side of the bank is the side of the river so the river bank controls the flow of currency mm -hmm. you know float when you're talking about float you're talking about cash mm -hmm. you know uh frozen assets etc etc there's so many there's so many liquefied terms terminologies that when we're talking about money we are referring to the marine kingdom okay mm -hmm. so when you borrow money from a bank know that what Erica said is true uh, I won't say that all of the employees of banks are into it like that no they are not but they are the higher-ups mm -hmm. okay this this world is dominated by powers of darkness in Psalms chapter 74 verse 20 it says have respect unto the covenant for the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty Listen to that statement. The dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. God is calling this earth, God has called this earth the habitation of cruelty. And the dark places, of obviously, the deep sea places, the places where nobody really knows about. Mm -hmm. They are filled with the habitations of cruelty. Mm -hmm. Now, in those places, there is a lot of of industrialization going on there's a lot of business going on mm -hmm. and when you borrow from a bank the higher ups in the bank will take your documents mm -hmm. your mortgage papers your 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 applications everything that you filled out with and you put your signature on it and they take it and they put it on an altar mm -hmm. if you don't have an altar to speak against that altar then at some point after you've paid off you've almost paid off the whole debt you've almost paid off the entire mortgage suddenly something happens to your finances and you're unable to pay off that mortgage and the, mm -hmm. and the bank comes and forecloses on that house mm -hmm. and that's the best way to make a profit that's the best way for the bank to make a profit to foreclose on your house or to foreclose on your land or to foreclose on your 
on your vehicle or whatever mm -hmm. it is that you borrowed money for. And that's the strategy of the enemy. That's the strategy. To steal, kill, and, and destroy. destroy. And that's the financial system of this world. It mm -hmm. is a system that is built on debt, and debt is slavery. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, he that commits sin is the slave of sin. So we have a sin problem in the earth. We have a slavery problem. We have a debt problem. That's why Jesus had to pay the price for us. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So my, when my uncle fulfilled everything that my grandmother had asked him to bring, when he brought everything that my grandmother had requested him to bring, uh, he, within two months, he began to flourish. He was uh, dealing in uh, selling Jacobs. So within two months, he began to flourish. He built within two months. He began to drive. It is possible. You can build within two months or a month. If you have the money, it's very possible. He began to rise up. He began to build. He began to drive. Money began to come. He began to attract customers. You're wondering why no one is going to your shop. And they are just going to a nearby shop that is not even fully stocked. That sells the same things you sell. Yeah. <laughs> and yours is much decorated and maybe you have more more things compared to the other person you're competing with. Is because life is spiritual. spiritual. You have to know this. So my uncle began to flourish financially and he came to thank my grandmother. And my grandmother asked him to bring some things to sacrifice. Why? Because you see... Evil spirits cannot survive in this planet without a body. Mm -hmm. So what they do, when you go to a witch doctor, a witch doctor will ask you to bring a sacrifice. So when you bring a sacrifice, you're bringing transport for an evil spirit. In fact, they will not tell you that. They will tell you bring a, a goat and then we slaughter to the ancestors. But they're asking you for transportation, a po something that you, they will use to open a portal mm. and usher a spirit into this planet. And that spirit, they don't tell you that it's going to torment you the rest of your life. So my uncle brought the goats that they had asked for. He brought the, the birds that were to be slaughtered. And, uh, and then my grandmother began to enchant. And when she enchanted, the demons that she conjured entered into the animals that my uncle had brought. Because they, they are supposed to be transport for evil spirits into this planet. Mm. Remember, they are not supposed to live on this planet. They come here illegally. That's why when you cast them out, even if you're the tiniest person in the church, they will go because they are here illegally. So now, grandmother ushered the spirits and she conjured them and they entered into those animals while I was watching. Why? Because she wanted me to, to inherit after her. So now, when these, these spirits entered the animals, she slaughtered. And that slaughtering is, is to empower that spirit that has been conjured into this planet to give it a life force. And then it rests on the witch doctor. And then the witch doctor will give this person that has gone there tasks. And then they will, they, that, with the help of that evil spirit, they will take away that problem. And the person will rejoice, not knowing that now that spirit is going to torment that person. So that's why you see, if you go to a sorcerer for a child, well, they may call their spirit and help you to get a child. But the problems that will be attached to that child, that child will not bring joy in your life. In fact, if someone is telling you to go to a shrine and you're struggling to get a child, it's better you be patient and wait for a child that is coming from God. Because a child that comes from a shrine is trouble. You get a child from childhood, the child is troublesome. They cause pain in your life. You know, I saw people who used to go to grandmother for, for children. They were barren and they wanted kids. And, and, and one of them, one of them went to, to my grandmother, a pastor's wife. You know, I talk oh. about these things because not to expose, but to help. A pastor's wife went to my grandmother because someone directed her and said, this lady will help you to have a child of your own. And she goes and my grandmother instructs her to do certain things without the pastor's knowledge. And she, she took whatever grandmother told her to take. And uh, when she conceived and she gave birth, 
she did not go back to my grandmother to thank her because you know what the sorcerers do when they give you what you're looking for they tell you you come back after you get it so because she's a pastor's wife when she got the child she took the child to church they gave her a christian name and everything and what happened that child began to bring sorrow to the mother she she gave birth to a child who's having sickle cells and when they we went for a test both of them they don't have they, 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 it's not possible for them to, to bring up a child with sickle cells medically. And this child was always sickly, in and out of hospital. All their money going to treating the child. Now, mm -hmm. I got delivered after some time, and they had my testimony. And the lady knew that she had gone to my, mother, my grandmother for, 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 for a child. And she knew that she did not go back to, to, to do whatever grandmother had told her to do because she's a pastor's wife. And she came to, to church for deliverance. You see, when, when you're old, you, tend to for, you can easily forget the young ones because they, when the young ones grow, they change. So this lady came, she began to, to share her, her story. I looked at her and I remembered her. And then I requested pastor that I talk to the wife alone. And then I said, pastor, I want to talk to the wife alone. And he allowed, the pastor was a very humble man, man of God, very good. The man really loves God. But the wife opened a door for attacks into that family by going to the devil for a child. She could not wait patiently on the Lord. All the children she got through the right means were healthy. The one she uh, went to, uh, for, uh, to my grandmother for was not healthy. So I told her, Madam, there is something that you did that you have to correct. You went to a shrine. You went to the devil. You asked the devil to give you a child. And now that is the, that's the reason as to why you're going through all this. And I asked her, does your husband know? She said, I don't want, I don't want him to know because if he knows, I, uh, our marriage could be destroyed. But I told her, now you're the one that is holding your child from getting delivered. Because if you know with your husband and you deal with these things because the power of sin is in its secrecy. If you open up and because your husband is a man of God, he can pray and you pray and you repent and you cancel any covenants that you could have entered into with my grandmother, then your, your daughter will be delivered. Mm -hmm. And you know, pride. The woman refused because she was looking at the investments they have with the husband, the vehicles, the, the big ministry and all that. She said, okay, I'm not ready to confess to my man. And uh, we, we end this session, just call them, just try to pray for my daughter. I prayed for the girl, but she went and she did not come back. She did not even tell the man. So what am I trying to say? Getting anything from the devil will bring more pain it will add more pain to the pain that you have because even that pain that you have is it came from the devil in the first place yes. so you cannot go for a solution to the person who has brought that problem to you mm. so now when my uncle took the vehicle that he had bought his first car he was so excited and uh, my grandmother got a bowel full of of water and she put herbs in that water and she began to drink the water and spit on the car. She spat on the car as she moved around it. And then she got some, something, she used it to sprinkle water on my uncle's car. And she told my uncle, from today onwards, in your business, you're going to excel. No one is going to compete with you. You're going to flourish. She began to speak those words and enchant while I was watching. Little did I know that she was introducing me to the marine kingdom because the marine kingdom, the kingdom of darkness, is um, uh, one of its greatest or biggest headquarters is the waters. Mm. The water spirits are the most stubborn spirits, but they are defeated. They cannot mm. challenge the kingdom of God. So I'm trying to tell you this not to scare you, but to expose the enemy because when I expose him, he's powerless. Mm. When you're ignorant, he's powerful. When you have knowledge, is powerless. That's why the Bible says that you will know the truth and the, the truth, truth shall, shall set you free. Mm. So now they began to do those rituals and I was watching. 
Then, when I grew up, I was initiated through a popular celebrity. And this celebrity took me to the marine kingdom. And in the marine kingdom, I began to encounter with, I, I, I got an encounter with Mami Water, the Queen of the Coast, the Queen of India, all those mermaids, those marginis. And I realized that in places where the, uh, their business are conducted in, in, uh, along the water bodies, like uh, uh, at the coast, like mm. Vessel, Mombasa, places where... California. Yes, those places, there is a high level of sorcery in such places. Why? It's because of the marine spirits. Mm. And there are so many marginis in those places. When I talk about genies, I'm talking about a mixture of demons and human beings. There are people who are not completely people. They are mm -hmm. a mixture of fallen angels mm -hmm. and people. Mm -hmm. And they are so beautiful. Like very good looking. Very good looking. Mm -hmm. You look at this person and you're like, wow, who created you? Is mm -hmm. it the same God? <laughs> you know, they are so 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 pretty. Abnormal beauty. That abnormal beauty. Mm -hmm. You look at this person and you're like, really, who are you? Are you a person or are you a certain goddess from somewhere? So this this uh these demons, these genies, they come to this planet to get uh to get our DNA. Mm -hmm. And what they do is you find a young girl, she's about 23. She's renting a very expensive apartment in a very expensive area. And she's driving an expensive car. You do not see the father of that girl. You do not see the mother. All you can see is the friends and the sisters around her. You don't know where she's coming from. But her beauty and the friends' beauties are so, so striking. Mm -hmm. Like you just see them and you get confused. Mm -hmm. And it, it happens to many people because so many people have come to me with those, you know, this is how people open up doors for attacks from the marine kingdom into their lives. So now men who cannot, who, who cannot allow their bodies to, to submit to the will of God, people who are taken by the lust of the flesh, they can easily become victims. I'm talking about both men and women. They can easily become victims to the marine kingdom. How? Now, when this man goes to this girl's apartment, or they go to a hotel, and they sleep together, the girl may tell this, this man that I, I'm taking con contraceptives, I cannot get pregnant. And the man will, will, you know, accept because of the striking beauty. And this girl is also sending a spell to the man. Mm -hmm. So if they sleep together, that girl will conceive. Mm -hmm. And these are the girls, when she sleeps with you, the following day, she chucks you. She doesn't want anything to do with you. Mm -hmm. And these men are so heartbroken because to get that girl to, to sleep with them, they have invested everything. They have even given vehicles and, uh, you know, their land titles to just uh, make this girl because of their striking beauty. Now, when she gets what she wants from that man she calls off the relationship and then she disappears mm. you never see this person again you don't even know where she came from you never see the person but they leave you with a broken heart and depression and that is a door mm -hmm. and now this person who has been heartbroken will look for for comfort from other people or from alcohol or from drugs, or from something else, and that is an open door to destruction for that person's life. And while this person is destroying he, uh, himself, this genie person will go back to the waters mm. and give birth. They don't give birth on this planet, no. Then you see that person again with a very beautiful baby. They don't show you the father. <laughs> that is how they multiply in the kingdom of darkness. And now, if you say uh, you're using protection, you say, I'll say this because I want you to know, they will get that semen and they will impregnate themselves. Mm. And then they will go to the waters and they will give birth and they will come back. And they come back to do that, to, to multiply, to get, a, because they, they are afraid of, of the true children of God multiplying. 
They want to be more in number than us, than the people who have a clean DNA. That's why you see they are concerned about the population of the world. They want to depopulate mm -hmm. the world. I think you understand what I'm talking about. I've, I've also written about the Marine Kingdom in Erica Part 3, Witchcraft and Spiritual Warfare. So now, they go, they give back. And when, when you come in contact with a marine spirit, they just know that they keep monitoring you. There are some people who have been monitored by spirits. They wonder why there is no relationship that they go into that materializes into marriage. Mm. You are very beautiful. You are wondering why no serious man comes your way. Everyone who comes your way, they, they just want to use you and go. They just want to take advantage of you. No one is serious. Mm -hmm. They just want to either infect you and go. Every man who comes in your life comes with a problem. And once they have unleashed a problem to you, they disappear. So you, the first one impregnated you and he left. This other one comes, he infects you and he goes. Another one comes, another pregnancy, he's disappeared. Like that. Mm -hmm. Because you had an encounter with the marine kingdom and you did not deal with it. It is not only happening to, to men, even women. These men who come from the marine kingdom, most of them are in the limelight. They are stars, superstars. Mm. They have the good looks. They, they, they look abnormally. They do things that are abnormal, that a normal person cannot do. And these are things that attract young girls. And they're very rich. They are rich. They have money. You don't know where the money is coming from. This guy is driving all the latest cars. He's living in all the expensive hotels and you don't know where the money is coming from and, and he will act like he's coming from a rich family or a rich boy or something like that. Mm -hmm. The moment he sleeps with you, he, 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 ends, he puts an end to that relationship and the girl becomes heartbroken. You know, there are some of them who target virgins, others just sleep with anyone because they want to, some people are turned into blind witches. When, when such a man sleeps with you, he puts a spell on you. And maybe you begin to attract only the wrong men. Only married men come your way. And you're wondering, why are only married men coming my way? You know, I want to be normal like the other girls. I've had girls coming to me and they're telling me, Sister Erica, pray for me. Only married men come my way. And you're wondering why. You know, this is a very beautiful girl. She, she can get a, a very reasonable husband and they, you know, start a family. But only married men. Why? Because of the marine kingdom. Mm. And then once that happens, they begin to now torture anyone who tries to propose to you. Someone who is serious, who comes, there's a girl who told me anyone who proposes to her dies. Mm -hmm. They can be friends. She can be friends with any man. But when the man proposes to her, death. So these demons, these genies, these hybrid people, they come and they bring a spell on someone's life and they torture that person. And a man who has given birth to children in the marine world, you, you find yourself only attracting those kinds of women. Only you live that life, uh, your family members are wondering, this man, our son has everything that he needs. Why doesn't he settle? That spirit cannot allow you to settle. Even when a serious person comes, that spirit will make you to be violent. It will make you to act in a bad way against the person who God designed to be in your life. And when that happens, the person goes. And these genie people, they come back. To again have children and then they go and if at all you stay in your marriage maybe the person your partner your marriage uh your, your wife is is patient and and you stay in marriage that that same kingdom does not want you to have children these are the people you see that the woman miscarriages like six times you see I, I, even one time it's not it's not normal for you to miscarry that is not the plan of god but now you miscarry the first time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time, fifth to sixth time. You're mm -hmm. miscarrying. The doctors cannot see any problem. Some people come and they say, Erica, I cannot conceive. When we go for uh, a medical checkup, 
my husband is very okay, I am very okay, but we cannot conceive why marine kingdom. That is, that is how the marine kingdom functions. It functions, it, uh, it, is, it dominates the area of finances, and it dominates the, the area of immorality. Why is it not allowing you to give back? Because it wants your husband to start cheating on you. It wants to frustrate you. The enemy does not come to bring peace. He comes to, to steal, kill, and to destroy. Mm -hmm. So I encourage every single, every single sister to stay faithful. And I encourage every single brother to remain faithful. Mm -hmm. Do not compromise your integrity. Because the enemy is looking for a way to come and destroy your future. Everything that he does. He's destroying your destiny. He's destroying your future. There are certain battles you will not fight if you're faithful with God. There are certain things you're not going to have to deal with if you're faithful with God. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's, a, there's a fact that I want people to know. It's truth. But most people, you know, may or may not believe it. But it is possible for a spirit to impregnate a physical woman. Is possible. In fact, the Christian faith is based upon the Immaculate Conception. The Holy Spirit, uh, the Bible says that he, he, he came upon uh, uh, Mary and the Immaculate Conception took place in a virgin. Mm. He impregnated her, okay? Mm. Now, it's not only the Holy Spirit that can do that. There are other spirits yes. that can do that. And, 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 and uh, uh, Genesis chapter 6 talks about how fallen angels did that as well. And when they did it, they were doing it to pollute the DNA of humanity so that the Messiah would never be born. Mm -hmm. Because if all human beings were Nephilim, if their blood was too mixed, was mixed up with fallen angel blood, then there would be no one to mother the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So... It is possible for a woman to be impregnated by a spirit, mm -hmm. by an evil spirit, mm -hmm. and bring forth a son, mm -hmm. bring forth a daughter, bring forth a child, a physical child. But mm -hmm. that child is not like other children. And then those are the people you see, they, they dream when they are breastfeeding, they mm -hmm. dream when, when they are giving birth to animals, they dream when they are breastfeeding animals and they don't know that life is spiritual. They just think it's just a dream. It's just a dream. And they end up not getting married. You mm -hmm. have to deal with these things. Me, in our family, uh, I had to deal with these covenants because all the girls in the family had been covenanted to the devil. They were supposed to be wealthy because of the marine kingdom, but they were not supposed to get married. And mm. for us to get married, it was warfare. Mm. It's another story for another day. Mm. The enemy fought. But you know, when you fight, what, when you're dealing with something that you know, it is very easy. That's why we decided to tell you these things so that you also know what you're dealing with in case mm. you're having the same, the same experiences. You know how to deal with your enemy yeah. if you know who your enemy is. And all of this information that is being revealed right now, it was prophesied that this type of information would be revealed. Mm -hmm. And it says so in Ezekiel chapter 28. God is speaking through the prophet Ezekiel. And the, and the prophet is prophesying over Satan and over his kingdom. And from verse 5, the 28th chapter, it says, By your great wisdom and by your traffic, you have increased your riches. Mm -hmm. And your heart is lifted up because of your riches. Mm -hmm. Therefore, thus says the Lord God. Because you have set your heart as the heart of God, mm -hmm. behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon thee, mm -hmm. the terrible of the nations, mm -hmm. and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. Mm -hmm. To draw their swords, what is the sword? It's the sword is the word of God. Mm -hmm. They'll draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom. What is Satan's wisdom? witchcraft, mm. sorcery. Mm. We're exposing it. We're bringing light upon it to defile his, his sorcery, to defile the beauty of his wisdom. Why? To destroy it because God is bringing it down because Satan's kingdom thrives when men are ignorant. Mm. 
But when people realize what is going on and they get the wiser, mm -hmm. oh, then Satan's in trouble. But he's allowed to thrive among people who have no idea of how his operations uh, are conducted. Mm -hmm. Behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon you, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring you down to the pit. You shall die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Mm -hmm. You see it? So Satan is being exposed here. And even as more and more people are listening to messages like this, they're being set free. People are praying more. People are reading their Bible more. They're taking Christianity more, more seriously. They're taking their faith seriously. They're becoming stronger. They're being uh, inspired to actually live this life out. It's, this is not a religion. This is a war. This is, the earth is, is a battlefield. Mm. All right? This place is not... Is, it's not, it's not just, it's, you might look out the window and it looks peaceful, but no, this is a battlefield. The Bible calls the earth the habitation of cruelty. Mm. So just know we are at war. Mm. Yeah. There, is, uh, th there are some politicians that I know, but I will not mention their names. They used to, for them, because they, they entered into a covenant with the marine, with the marine kingdom, their target is the young girls, virgins. Mm. Mm. You find a professor, a vice president in newspapers with young girls. He's a married man and the wife does not come out, you know, to talk and say anything about it. He's ever in the limelight with young girls. What do you think he's doing to those young girls? He, he, is, he is covenanting them to the marine kingdom. Every girl that he sleeps with, he either sacrifices them to the devil or he covenants them. There is a girl who came to, to me and, and she told me about how she was initiated into the marine kingdom and she got pregnant and in a mysterious way and she gave birth in a mysterious she Actually, she, she miscarried uh, three months but she, it is after she dreamt that she was giving her baby to the queen of the coast that she woke up and she found herself on the floor and there she had miscarried and the enemy began to use her and she began to initiate men and these spirits would come and sleep on her and, and, and she got to a point that she could not even get satisfied when she's with any man because these spirits had already destroyed her life so I'm telling you these things are real but God is more powerful than the marine kingdom I just want you to know because the Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free in your business. Before you start operating or selling whatever you're selling, why don't you start your day in prayer? Because the people you're competing with, before they open their shops, they are going to smoke pipe, they are going to burn incense. There are some people, they cannot conduct any business without sacrificing to their God. They wake up very early while you're asleep and they do all the rituals that they are supposed to do let me tell you that this is a fact no one rises up to the top without spiritual backup and no one goes down to the bottom without spiritual backup so you choose you either go up or you go down but when you're in Christ there is no going down there is going up how, how do you go up in Christ? By living by the word of God and everything that the word of God says about you. How do you do that? You don't say what you see happening in your life. Let's say you do not have money. You don't go around saying that I am poor, I am broke, I don't have money. Because the enemy wants you to say exactly that. Because the words we speak create. We are in the image of God. So now, the Bible, that's why the Bible says, let the rich, let the poor say, I am rich. Let the blind say, I can see. Let the weak say, I am strong. Not let the weak say, I am weak. You say what you want to see in your life, even when the, the situation speaks otherwise. You say what you want to say because God has given you authority over that situation. And life is spiritual. That's why the Bible says that the power of life and death is in our tongue. 
some people when he, they drop a, a glass they say oh my god i am dead i'm finished mm -hmm. just by dropping a glass mm -hmm. on the ground they are finished mm -hmm. they are dead the words that you speak they create when your child performs poorly in class do not tell them they are dense, they are foolish, they cannot make it. Don't say those words, even when you're disappointed because of the money you have invested in them. Do not say that. Say what you want to see in their life, because their future is not dependent on their education only. Their future is in God's hands. Where the teachers may say that your child is the last, but God is speaking something else about your child. You don't know what the child is going to become in future so by saying that you're stupid you're dense you cannot make it i'm d disappointed in you you're creating that in your child's life and it's just a matter of time and that child if the child was 80 out of 100 because you said she was stupid when she became 80 you will see her being 100 out of 100 because you're creating it you have to speak what you want to see in someone's life my mother when we were serving the devil me and my brother when when my we were in the world my brother was now listening to secular music we were all disobedient to her she would say both of you will serve the god that i serve and she would pray even when the situation was was looking at, like difficult she would pray and i want to encourage every parent that is watching this it doesn't matter what the enemy has done to your child. What matters here is what God is saying about your child. And as a parent, you begin to speak and declare what you want to see in your child's life. Don't curse. Even when sometimes it is so tempting, there are certain things they do that make you feel like you want to curse them. Don't do it because in doing it, you enable the enemy. The enemy cannot operate unless if there is an open door. So by speaking those words, you're opening a door for the enemy to come into your child's life or into your life or into that situation. So we do not want to give him any platform. We do not want to give him attention. He wants attention. So we get to a point whereby we don't give him attention. Absolutely. You know, um, the Bible instructs us in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. God commands you to live a lifestyle that is dominated by meditation because your life is going to be a product of your meditations, whether you know this or not. So some people harness meditation so that they can use it as the tool that God has given them. Um, other people have abused it because Satan perverts those things that God has provided and he, be, he begins to pervert it, you know, to, to make it something that God never intended, like, you know, meditating in, you know, Hindu Kundalini meditations. Those are, those are perversions. But in Joshua chapter one, verse eight, it says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but you will meditate therein day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. success yes. So good success has a condition, a prerequisite. You must meditate in the word of God day and night. And what is meditating going to do? It is going to give you a mindset. It's going to transform the way you think. You will no longer think about just the things that you see or you will no longer think about the evil that happened to you yesterday. You see, because as soon as you continually think on the evil that happened to you yesterday, those thoughts become your meditations and your meditations reproduce cycles of the same in your life. And God knows this. That's because God has created you like that. He has created you to be a person who is uh, able to meditate and change your circumstances just by the things you're meditating on. This is why Satan will, will go out of his way to make sure that fathers abuse daughters or mm. fathers abuse sons yeah. or sodomize children. Why? Because these young, these, the young victim will think about the event that happened to them. Mm. And because of the trauma, over and over again, they're thinking about this thing. And those thoughts are very powerful. They are meditation. 
and they will go from you being in your mind, being recycled over and over again in your mind, to dropping down into the subconscious mind. And once things are in the subconscious mind, they begin to drive your life. Unconsciously, these things will drive your life. And that's why a woman who has been abused in, uh, by her father or by like an uncle or by somebody who's older, obviously, will go through life meeting abusive men over mm. and over and over again. She'll be like, what is it? Do I have like a sign on my forehead that says abuse me? No. These are your meditations and your meditations keep on dropping into your spirit. That's why Satan sent the man to, to, to abuse you in the first place because he knew your meditations will keep the cycle going in your life over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. That's why God's word commands you. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Mm -hmm. So for anybody who's suffering from cycles that don't seem to end, I can guarantee you it has a lot to do with your meditations. Mm -hmm. And that's why Psalms chapter 1 repeats the same thing. He mm -hmm. says, blessed is the man that walks not after the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. David knew this secret. God had ordained this man to be king, but David could never become king until he realized the power of meditation. So he never saw himself as a sheep, as a shepherd. He mm. saw himself as the king. Mm. And he kept on seeing himself as a king. Mm. The same thing worked for Joshua, uh, for Joseph. Even while Joseph was in the, in the, in the, in the cell, mm. he had been locked up by Potiphar. He was there for two years, but he never allowed himself to continuously feel sorry for himself and mm -hmm. think about how Potiphar had thrown him in jail. And he never allowed that stuff to get him depressed. He mm -hmm. never allowed those thoughts to be recycled in his mind over and over again. No way. Mm -hmm. He saw himself rising. He saw himself doing well. He meditated on the goodness of God. He kept on repeating it. He, he did not look at his surroundings. Mm -hmm. He saw himself in the future. And if you see yourself in the future, the present cannot hold you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that is... Thank you, Father. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. We thank you. Yes, Lord, we thank you. Yes, Lord, we thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The devil yes, is such Lord. a liar. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, so uh, they use fire in the kingdom of, of, of darkness. Why? Because uh, when they light up those fires on their altar and they burn incense and they, uh, they burn the sacrifices to their gods, they usher in a certain kind of force. And then they use that force to send spells to their victims, like witch doctors, for them to have customers going their way all the time. They have to get a problem out of the way and, and replace it with another problem. And how do they do that? Or they do that on their altar. So there is a priest, someone who works with, this, with the sorcerers, he's called a priest. And that priest, that priest's duty is to keep fire burning on that altar. The fire is not supposed to go out. And when the fire is burning on that altar, they keep speaking negatively. They keep sending spells because the sorcerers have mastered the importance of, of the words that we speak. They know that every word that we speak carries weight. It, 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 it is meaningful in the spiritual realm because the spiritual realm is like lightning and thunder. We tend to see the, the, we tend to hear the thunder and people tend to run away from thunder, forgetting that lightning is more dangerous than the thunder. Mm. When I was young and, and I, would, I would hear that thunder, I would go under the bed, forgetting that what was more dangerous than the thunder mm. came before even that voice. Mm. So, and then I would also run, you know, like the kids are innocent. You run towards the lightning because it looks mm. like it's innocent. So that is how the spiritual uh, world is. Mm. It looks like it's something you can overlook, but you cannot overlook it. 
if you want to excel in life beyond the normal level like up to a point that you know the bible talks about good success in joshua 1 verse 8 it talks about good success meaning there is bad success someone can just be successful out of the blue and and you cannot even point a finger to where the success came from the person can only point to god either mm. to the devil depending on where the source of their success is coming from that's why you see those sorcerers in their houses they have altars in those altars they smoke pipe they burn incense they keep the fire burning on their altars now a child of god how do you keep your success when you're praying and asking god for a husband and then god gives you the husband do you stop praying because you have the husband forgetting that the same the same enemy who was fighting you and hindering you from having that husband will also fight to separate you that's why you see there are so many cases of divorce in the church today and it's not supposed to be the case mm -hmm. you you started on a good on, on a good note you all loved each other you were faithful to each other and then after 10 years one partner becomes unfaithful why is it happening because the fire on the altar went down when everything was okay you relaxed and when you relaxed the enemy came in and when the enemy comes in he comes in a way like he brings fear he brings pain he brings trauma just to discourage you from going back to the altar then you feel like you want to commit suicide you feel like you don't want to pray anymore he isolates you from the people that are going to help you and after that is how he destroys so as a child of god even when god has given you whatever you've been praying for do not allow your prayer life to go down because if your prayer life goes down mm -hmm. then it means the enemy is launching an attack for your life and when it comes it is difficult to pray when you're under attack so do not allow the fire on your altar. The fire on your altar is prayer. Do not allow your prayer to go down because your enemy does not allow their altar to go down. They do not allow the fire on their altar to go down. Whoever is fighting your life, they are so committed to, that, to their altars. They even follow every step that you make. So for you to be more powerful than your enemies, to a point that they give up on you. They say the more we fight this person, the more she goes up. The secret is here. Do not allow the enemy to mess with your prayer life. Mm. Even when you don't feel like praying, at least say some three sentences and the Holy Spirit will take over and you'll find yourself praying and praying. You know, it's, it's not something that sometimes is very easy when you have so many things to do. You have children to take to school you have to go to work and you have to wake up in the morning there are so many things that you have but in your program every day have some time with god spend some time on the altar let the fire keep burning on that altar as you're driving that vehicle let you can drive a vehicle when you're speaking in tongues mm, even when you're so busy yeah, yeah. leviticus chapter 6 uh, I think we gave this scripture last time, but it should be repeated. Leviticus chapter 6 and verse 12. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. Mm -hmm. It shall not be put out. And the priest, which is you, mm -hmm. shall burn wood on it, which is prayer, mm -hmm. every morning. Mm -hmm. And lay the burnt offering in order upon it. And he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offerings. This is mm -hmm. prayer. The fire shall be ever burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Okay, so that means the life of prayer must be continuous. Jesus said men ought always to pray. Why? Because he understood. He knows that while we are you know, going about our business or while we're sleeping in our beds, Jesus said while men slept, the enemy crept in and sowed tares. What does that mean? The enemy comes in and begins to program wickedness into your day. Mm -hmm. Okay, technically, a day does not begin at 6 a.m. in the morning or when the sun rises. Technically, the day begins at around 12 midnight. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, if you're asleep at around that time, 
and you're waking up at 6 a.m., the enemy has already been working for about six hours, for four, five, six hours. He has had an advantage over you to program your day because every day must be programmed. Remember, Jesus said, sufficient for the day is the evil thereof. So the evil that has been programmed into a day is only sufficient for that one day. Mm -hmm. So you must program every morning. You must get up and program your day. You must get up and put the fire upon the altar and program blessing, program safety, program righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Get up in the morning and program. Use the word of God. Speak in tongues often. Mm -hmm. Without it, the enemy will dominate your life because the enemy understands programming. Mm -hmm. I remember Erica told us about how her, her, her grandmother would pull the moon. And by pulling the moon, they would begin to smoke pipe and declare certain words. And the words that they would speak would be written upon the moon. Mm. And there's, there's a lot of truth to that because, you know, and some people will, will look at that and say, man, what has the moon got to do with anything? And I'm telling you, these things have everything to do with mm. the reality in which we live. In Isaiah chapter 60, and verse 19, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 19, it says, The sun shall be no more your light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, mm -hmm. but the Lord shall be unto you an everlasting light, and your God your glory. Mm -hmm. Your sun, verse 20, shall no more go down, neither shall your moon withdraw itself, for the Lord will be your everlasting light, and the days of your mourning, mourning meaning weeping, shall be ended. So now just think about that, because even the English language, the way it was, has been programmed, is, is not in line with godliness. Because when you wake up in the morning, somebody tells you, good morning. Do you know what it means to mourn? To mourn is to weep. So it means good weeping, as in like good sorrow, good melancholy, good <laughs> sadness. Why? Because you're going into a day that has been programmed the night before by the enemy. Mm. So this world indeed is the habitation of cruelty and evil. Wickedness rules this world. And even the way people speak, the language has been programmed to curse humanity. Mm. So I want to encourage you, speak in tongues often. Speak in tongues as often as possible. Because mm. as you do, you're edifying your spirit you are praying perfection. You are praying out the mind of God. You are communicating with angels. You are communicating with God. Mm -hmm. You are releasing the power of God. You are bypassing your mind, which has the ability to doubt mm -hmm. whatever you might have spoken. Had you spoken something in English or in whatever language you speak, you might have spoken something, but then your mind doubting it would disempower it. Mm -hmm. So speaking in tongues, though you did not understand but at least it bypassed your your mind and you were not able to doubt it and, and put unbelief on it because unbelief is as powerful as belief. Mm. You can destroy your life through unbelief. You can make your life through belief. So, mm. yeah. And then uh, when, you, when you live like that, these other things that have been affecting your life, the spiritual marriages, those uh, attacks, you know, from the marine kingdom, they begin to distance themselves from you. Why? Because now you're getting back to where the first man was. And the first man was in the presence of God. And in the presence of God, Satan could not do anything to him. But when he got out of the presence of God, that is when he began to experience sicknesses, he began to experience death, he began to struggle to get even food on his plate. But when he was in the presence of God, he had everything, he had plenty, he had dominion, he was the boss, you know, he was above. So if you want to be the boss, then you have to keep the fire burning on your altar. Other than that, people will just come tomorrow and they'd be promoted and you remain on that level because for them they know the secret, they know that life is spiritual. So if you want, if you also want to flourish in life, you have to be a prayerful person. 
God can just put favor on your life and you'll be given a, a position at your place of work that you don't even qualify for. Why? Because life is spiritual. When you grasp that, I'm telling you, you will never fail in life because no matter what the enemy sends your way, it will never come near you. Like it is said in Psalms 91, that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Do you know what it means to be in the presence of God? In his shadow. His shadow is not dark because God is light. You're in the light of God. You're the light of the world. Darkness cannot come near you. And the things that the Bible talks about, whatever you will get as a result of abiding. Can you read? Because I, my, 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 my eyes are, are not that... Um, yeah, I cannot read these tiny words, but... The things that the Bible talks about that you get as a result. And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and, and, and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Under his wings shall thou thrust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fleeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday, when the witch doctors are burning, are smoking pipe, and they are sending and they are enchanting. You will not be afraid because you will not be affected. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. You will not even struggle to say back to sender. It will just go back, because it will find a force that it cannot stand. Because it will find you in the light of God. And darkness, where there is light, darkness has to disappear. The Bible says they come in one direction, but they scatter in seven directions. Because thou has made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil before thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. Mm -hmm. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. Deliverance comes from dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. When you're in the presence of God, is when you know his name. Some people don't know God's names apart from saying God. They only know God. But in the presence of God, he reveals to you the mysteries of the kingdom. He reveals to you the secrets of his kingdom. And you begin to live supernaturally. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With the long life, this is also something that comes by dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Even when everyone is affected by COVID-19, it will not come near you. Even when it tries to come, it will not affect you. Because the Bible says, I, with long life, will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. I have seen this work for me. I want to encourage you to develop that close relationship with God. People ask me, how have you survived? You know, many people who escaped from the kingdom of darkness are attacked by the same kingdom and they die prematurely they are either killed or they are silenced you know the enemy has tried to do whatever he can do he has unleashed his best he has done everything that he can do but the secret is staying in the presence of god the secret is abiding in the secret place of the most high when you're there even when the enemy wants to disorganize your life he cannot he just wishes he could but he cannot because you're protected by God. His word, his word is truth. His word is life. So 
Yeah, be blessed. Those Amen. of you who want to contact us, you can contact us uh, for prayer or counseling on plus two five four seven one seven zero six two zero nine eight or plus two five four seven nine nine seven three three seven seven five. I repeat, plus two five four seven one seven zero six two zero nine eight or plus two five four seven nine nine seven three three seven seven five or email us at info at life is spiritual.org info at life is spiritual.org we love you so much may god bless you Thank you.